take back my life It's time to go my own way Across the horizon I've been dreaming about it every day I disconnected the heating units in the floor and while they were out because we were draining the cooling system I took the opportunity to flush out the whole cooling system through the block and the radiator so I just disconnected all the hoses and everything and then just flushed them all out with rainwater and now I'm putting it all back together. All right we've had a big day today pulling up the plywood floor and then grinding back the chassis getting any of the like old glue and wood off and cleaning it up so that's our old plywood floor that was down here and it's good we haven't noticed much rust at all we've got a tiny bit in this corner to treat um, just because we think we've got a little bit of a leak coming through this window here but that should be an easy fix but yeah everything else is coming up really clean which is awesome <laughs> What are you up to? Just cleaning up this corner, cleaning the glue off, so we can lay the new floor. We are in the process of wax and grease removing um, the chassis. Just going around wiping wax and grease remove, just to remove any contaminants, any wax and grease. Um, so then we can start going through and rust converting um, all the bare metal and any bits that are slightly rusted. And then from there, we'll do like an etch primer over the top. Um, and then after that, we'll do like a bitumen coat just on the chassis. So we're getting through it, almost up to rust converting. Woohoo! Is Chelsea painting on the rust converter? Sunshine! We're just going through over the top and painting it with bitumen paint just to really seal off the rust converter and then we primed it and now bitumen paint and then once that's dry it'll be ready for the floor to go down. I'm just painting on the bitumen paint onto the live edge of the form play floor. Um, because we just want to seal it before we put it down. Um, yeah, Dan just went around and cut all of our floor, which is exciting, so we should be able to put our floor in today. So, do a little run through of everything that's under the bus, um, now that we can see it. Right thing there, that's your fuel filter. This big hunk of metal here is our gearbox. You have the drive shaft, which is here, which runs the whole way down, and then the exhaust is there. That's the condenser unit for the AC. That's our fuel tank. So yeah, you've got the drive shaft that continues from the gearbox. Goes all the way through until it hits this other big hunk of metal, which is our rear diff. Um, and then that goes to our rear wheels. You can see the dual wheels. Then we have our spare tire up the back there. And the exhaust continues through out the back. We've got our form ply all cut and ready to go in and painted. And now we're about to put our floor in. We've prepared the chassis. Dan is just putting the glue down so then when we put the floor in it can sit on there and get nicely stuck down. We'll also then screw it in as well. So the glue's in and we're ready to put the first sheet down. coaster there's like around the wheel arches there's this kind of pan here and then there's this step um, and so to get around that instead of having to put like a small thin piece in 
um, we just rebat it out the back of the board um, so then we can yeah the board will just sit basically hard up to the wheel arch and create a nice finish so this is the rebate that we've taken out of the back of the board so then this will sit on and sit onto that lip so this bit here Just notice that one of the boards is sitting slightly higher, so Dan's going to go around and just chop a little bit off the corner to try and see if the board sinks a little bit. Dan's just measuring up where all of the chassis beams are underneath so then we can drill all the holes and then put the screws in um, because yeah we need it to bite to something so it's biting to our chassis underneath. Is that right? Yep. How do you know where those railings were? Like um, where those chassis holes, where the chassis was? Well from memory I know that this one runs straight through until it hits this one here. Yeah. And then I just put, before we put the sheet in, I just put a couple marks on the um, on the bus. There. So you're gonna mark there to line up with the gotcha, gotcha. And then, yeah, and so then we know that there's one that goes through the middle there. Yeah. And then we've got the outside. We did use grab self-tapping screws um, to see if they would work, but we had a few snaps, so it's just easier to pre-drill them all. The last floor screw. Ta da! Ice <laughs> skating rink. Mm -hmm. We have a floor! from Bunnings some paint and we just got some like what do you call it mist tint paint yeah, it's a mist tint um so it's on clearance for twenty dollars for this massive thing it's so big that's so good for twenty bucks yeah that's so good um, um the only thing is it means you can't choose your color but because this paint is just going to be for the backs of the ply which is going to be pressed up against the um insulation it doesn't really matter because you're not going to be able to see it yeah so what color is it it's on the top Oh, a grey. There's another light grey or there's a dark grey there. Okay, alright. Well, it's fine because this colour is going to be on the back side of the cupboard, so you're not going to see it. It's going to... our ceiling colour. No. <laughs> so, um, and also, we wanted something that was semi mould resistant. So, it says it's antimicrobial, oh, yeah, antibacterial barrier, and protects against mould, mildew, and fungus. So, that's good. 20 bucks. Perfect. It's yeah, exactly for $20. what we wanted. I saw it there and was like, oh, that could be good. That's epic, like, isn't it? Yeah. So we're up to the sound deadening part of the build and we are using car builder's sound deadening. We used it on the van and we were super happy with it. And yeah, it's a really good product and it worked great for us in the van. So we picked it for the bus as well. Super keen to use it. So it's pretty easy to apply. You just basically, we've got sheets in here and then you basically cut them to size and then stick them onto the panel and roll them on with the applicator and then it helps to stop the vibrations of the tin. Alrighty, first thing I'm doing on the sides of the bus is cleaning it with wax and grease remover. Dan just um, slid this into me. So yeah, just cleaning it with some wax and grease remover. Um, making sure the area is all clean so then the car builder's sound deadener can stick on nicely. And whilst I'm sound deadening, Dan is measuring up the plywood that we need to put over the top of the insulation. So he's just marking it all down. So whilst I'm doing the sound deadener, Dan has just nipped off to go and pick up some sarking, which is the stuff that's going to go over the top of our insulation, like a vapour barrier. Um, so yeah, he's just gone to pick up that. We found it for $20 on Marketplace, so how good is that? We're trying to use a lot of recycled materials or just like, you know, 
bargains off Marketplace for this build. Um, so yeah, pretty cool what you can find on there. Can't believe that there was the exact vapor barrier that we're keen to use on Marketplace. So it definitely pays to look around. Only $20, so we can't complain. So yeah, he's gone to go and pick that up. And yeah, we're stoked with those types of bargains for this bus build. So yeah, that's where we're going to try and save a bit of money. So anyway, I'm going to continue with sound deadening. It's super easy to apply. You just use this roller and the sound deadener rolls right on and it's working well. Quiet now into the tremor of a hope that's growing deep inside. Sweet, how good's that? For twenty dollars, that's so good. For a big old bunch of socking, so we we'll use that for our vapor barrier. Thank you, Facebook Marketplace. I'm just going around with a little bit of sandpaper, and then just any little tiny rust spots um, I can find. There's actually not too many, which is good, but um, there was like a little tiny rust spot there, so I just sanded that back to the little bit of bare metal, and then we're going to paint some rust treatment slash preventer on top of that. And Dan is fitting the other side of our plywood. So we've got a little cut out there for the wheel arch. Dan's been doing that. And that will then fit on over the top of our insulation once we've done that. Okay, so now while Chelsea's sanding everything outside, I'm gonna fish oil down in any of the seams before you put the insulation in. This is just Amiga fish oil, we just put it in with a brush or tip it in. Um, yeah, it's gonna run it in down, all in along these cracks back down here, where all the seams are, any places that are hard to reach um, that yeah, we won't be able to get to later. Um, just then if any moisture does get down there, it won't rust. If there is any rust down there, it won't rust any further, but for the most part, this bus, is very clean of rust so yeah pretty stoked with that but yeah we'll just run a bit of that down and um, sort all that out so we'll go around and do that now glug, glug. Alrighty, I'm just about to start insulating the bus. So we're going with the same insulation that we decided to go with in our van build. It's a polyester insulation. It's rated at R2. Um, and it's apparently mostly made out of recycled beverage containers, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it worked for our van build. So we decided why not? Let's use it for our bus build. So the process that we've done is clean the metal and then we sound deadened putting the insulation on and then we're going to put a vapor barrier on and then we put a piece of I think we're going with 7mm ply over the top. Alrighty, late last night we both went around and finished insulating this side of the bus. So this side's done and this side's all done and now we're just going through and finding any little parts and just trying to put a little bit more in just so there's no little spots that we've missed. We're up to the next step in the build, we're doing the vapour barrier. of the bus is old insulation and I'm trying to get it all off at the moment so I've got my little dust mask that I need to put on um, and we're using I'll grab the tool where did my tool go? Uh, it's a clean and strip disc <laughs> so I'm just building the bed base um, so basically, sorting out all the pieces, working out exactly how I want it to work. Basically, we'll have this bracket here, and then we'll have these that run across, and then that goes through there, like that. And then this makes it, so then the bed can hinge up like that. Um, 
So Chelsea's have gone through and removed all the insulation. And so now I'm just gonna go around with the um, spray can of etch primer and then just any bits that we came back to bare metal and just give them a real light dusting. This is the product we use. It is very, very, very good, very long lasting. And yeah, it's a really good product. Remember to put a dust mask on when you're sanding in a confined space or anything like that. Alrighty, so it is the next day now. Yesterday, Dan painted the rust preventer stuff on the roof. So I'm using my car builder's application roller and my car builder's sound deadener and I'm going to start sound deadening the roof, which is going to help so much with rain noise and just outside world noise and making the bus sound a bit less like a tin can. So let's get onto it. Thank you so much for watching our latest bus build update. Our tiny home on wheels is slowly coming together. Super excited to show you the next update. And yeah, really appreciate that you're here watching and see you in the next video.